everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Nancy Wallace Lobbs, and this is my great partner in crime, Brian Lobbs. So we just wanted to do a quick um, holiday video on a topic that's kind of near and dear to our hearts as been real estate investors. So before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and follow me and you can hear all kinds of real estate investing tips and whatnot. So we decided that being the end of the year, you know, looking forward to 2023 and all the opportunities since the housing market's going to change that, you know, with partners and wives and that could be work partners, whatever partner you have, right? In our case, husband wise, but we wanted to talk about when you invest with family what are some five pitfalls if you will some areas that you know you could find yourself in trouble so right. you know the right. so number one okay is unrealistic expectations so brian why don't you kind of talk about what all that means like for us that's been like unrealistic expectations well i think you have to be kind of on the same page what are you looking to put get out of it what are you looking to put into it can can you invest the amount of money that if you're doing a flip, how much money are you going to put into it? And what's the ARV going to be get, getting out of it? So what's your exit strategy, I guess, is part of it when are you on the same page? Right. And, you know, sometimes um, one partner thinks, oh, we're going to make a ton of money and all of that, which leads me right into the second area of conflict that can happen, unfair delegation of responsibilities. Now, you and I have actually experienced this because yeah when we've done flips before i felt like i was doing a lot of the work and so then it was causing problems because brian's a perfectionist and i'm more like okay just get the job done <laughs> so i would hire the contractor then he would come in behind the contractor and just have a fit right well yeah sometimes the quality of work wasn't what i had expected and i had to learn that sometimes good is good enough and uh, you have to let them do their work and they get a little irritated with me. So I was the one that was kind of, so now what happens is I schedule the contractor and then Brian actually goes over the details of the work and then he's able right. to say exactly what it is. So but that was kind of a big issue for us and caused a lot of conflicts, right? When you look at the responsibilities and unfair designation, just delegation, I mean, it's not just when you get the property and let's say you're rehabbing it. So I'm going to talk about Airbnb because that's such a popular topic for families to get involved in together. You know, mom, dad's got a house or a room or something, but it's not just, you know, getting the property, the asset ready. It's also about who's going to manage it. Who's going right. to, you know, do the maintenance, right. who's going to pay the bills on it. In our uh, partnership, now I do do quite a bit of that. Uh, right. I manage it and I just, right. you know, I have a system, but you know, I asked Brian to, he helps me with building a process for that, right? Because I'm not very data driven. I just like it all set up. And then um, we hire um, virtual assistants to kind of help us with right. the, the details that I just right. can't do, you know, like in inputting information. So now the next category is kind of interesting, right? Because, <clears throat> you know, we started later in life when we started investing, right? And so yeah. we actually mentor okay. and coach young people but also people in our age bracket but what's interesting is working with folks uh, i'm gonna call it generational differences and that um, i mean usually when you your families are working together your partners um, so let's say kids so this is a, you know you know we have well children. let's talk about kids what age group are you talking about so adult now, children adult, adult children, children. Now, yes. when kids are young now when our daughter was young we used to haul her around you know and she's you know she's been on plenty of rehabs not her favorite thing to do but now airbnb is a little bit different story because she likes getting in there and you know decorating it or what now not so you know she's involved that way but generationally speaking just communication right you know yeah. so i'm not a big texter and um you know when yeah. you're working with and it could be younger contractors i mean so generational difference is not just about when you purchase the property right, right. it's like right. just you know, communication and it's the and, ongoing yeah. communication. Right. And I think you could say this, so like work ethic might be a little bit different in a younger generation, you know, yeah. that wasn't brought up in the, you know, in the fifties or sixties or whatever. Well, it definitely is. A, a, there is a difference and you have to agree on the, the cadence of when you're going to communicate and you know, what the work ethic is. You have to talk to them and get a good feel for where they're at. Right. And this even goes, you know, not, you know, just kind of one more step, you know, because all of you know that I used to have a property management company, but you know tenants mm -hmm. you know generation so you know we're older landlords we have younger tenants so just you know communication 
money management, right? So uh, sometimes that can be a generational difference too. So I yeah. know like our children have more opportunities to make more money, right? So they have more, I think disposable income would be, you know, probably correct. Yeah, there are some young professionals that are out there that are er good earners. You yeah. mean, they're, they would have and very good jobs. Part of our family too, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So now let's talk about number four. So emotional decision-making. So, mm -hmm. you know, we all come to town on assets if we're working with our family with all kinds of different baggage, for lack of better word. So, you know, when you work with family, we just talked about generational differences and we talked about unrealistic expectations. So if you bring all those, so usually people are really excited about investing in real estate, right? I would say, yeah, I, in general, when they get into it, you know, they, they want to do it right. And they, they get really over excited, sometimes over excited, yeah, I would say. <laughs> and then they find out, oh my gosh, uh, I need to have the foundation fix. Oh my gosh, I didn't know it was going to cost, you know, $10,000 to fit my two bedroom, one bath, uh, Airbnb. Oh my gosh, I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know. Right. Um, so, you know, sometimes emotional decision making and this usually happens, I'm sorry, gals, it usually happens to us. Not always, not always, but- we, I've been guilty of it. You have that. been guilty. I think you're more guilty of it than I am. Because I have a, I have a vision. Me when too. I when I go in and I see a rough place, I I can see it when it's, when it's gonna be finished and I get excited about that. Yeah, and I'm more like, okay, how much is it gonna cost? And <laughs> this is true, you know, he's much more the visionary in terms of like what the final outcome, I'm looking at the final dollar amount, right? <laughs> so, but emotional investing can be like, oh my gosh, like a lot of people are excited about, you know, being an Airbnb host, right? Which is great. And it's a great way to, you know, make money and everything, but you know, the market always changes and you always have to be on top of it. So what started out as, yay, we're going to have this property and we're going to be able to go to the beach, you know, once or twice a year and, you know, write it off and have, then it becomes kind of a nightmare because it's not booking or maybe there was, um, I see all kinds of weird things on Facebook about in terms of, oh my gosh, the septic system just went out or I had to cancel or whatever. So just remember emotions can run high when you're working with family, even as husband and wife. Yeah. I mean, we've had our, right over no, the, we, we've yeah. knocked heads plenty of times, but heads, right. But, we've uh, knocked heads. Yeah. yeah well, it's, so I'm gonna it's tell natural. The story. I'm going to tell the story. So I, uh, we got behind or, you know, we're, we're in a bind with this um, property because we were over budget. It needed tile throughout the whole house. Anyway, I ended up learning how to tile. And so we were in a closet and remember i'm not as perfectionist it looked good right it was like a, she did a very good it job was good. yeah 18 2000 square foot home i tiled plus three surround so i did it all but i got to a closet i was tired it was 11 o'clock at night i just wanted to be so done i had grout underneath my fingernails and in the closet the tile pieces which okay it's a closet right it was a coat closet a little one weren't quite lining up the way brian would have done it so yeah, we had a big fight about that. But in the end, you know, we made lots of money it's on the house closet. and everything. It's a closet. <laughs> I can try to tell that. So it's anyway, emotions can run high. The last one is really something people don't really think about. They don't think about, well, you know, what happens when I don't want to be in this, I don't want to own this anymore. I don't want to be part of this asset uh, that we bought as a family. Um, so I yeah. see the la the biggest one could be really avoided. So it's lack of planning. Like what happens if, you know, you're in it together with your family and there's older people, younger people, but somebody just says, you know what, I need to get my money back. Or what happens when it's really successful and they want to put their money in. So a lot of problems that happen on down the road can all be fixed by what, Brian? Get it in writing. Get it in writing. And, you know, even though you're a family and you love each other, you know, things come up. We just talked about emotional things. So always make sure that you are putting this asset that you're putting money into and what the vision of it is, you know, the planning, what you're right. going to use it for and get it all in writing and, you know, include people think I'm morbid when I say this, but, you know, look at like what happens if someone passes away, unfortunately, you know, um, who is the decision maker who has access to the bank accounts? So what's going to happen? So what I always say is, you know, when you're putting these partnerships together is to do the planning and look at every worst case scenario, right? 
Right. So would you say that's right? Oh, uh, absolutely. You got you have to, again, you have to be on the same page and somebody has to you, you have to talk about these tough items because yes. they're very important because if they're not covered in a JV agreement or some paperwork, they're going to be a, really tough to deal with when they occur because who knows if somebody passes away or somebody uh, wants to get out for whatever reason they or get in, you know, get in is is you know just as hard as getting out i yes. mean because yes. there's some tough decisions there is that whether you want them to get in um so it, it's it's very important very yeah, important for the paperwork to be there with this too so if you're a parent couple whatever and you're leaving your assets to your heirs if you will then make sure that it's a something that they want right something that they know how to take care of and never put them in a position of not knowing what to do you know express your wishes to them and you know it's okay to have discussions before the end right and that's what we've done in our family yeah. so we've set it up that we've said hey this is planning it's just life planning life estate planning so that the burden is not on our children right so that right. when all said and done at the end of the day they either want it or they don't they know how to manage it or they don't so well, you know, I just want to say happy holidays. And uh, I'm so glad that y'all came. And do you have any final words for everybody no, just, for the end of 2022? Crazy year. I wish you happy investing and a you know, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And uh, look forward to your you know, great adventures. Great adventures in 2023. Thanks, y'all. Merry Christmas. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a follow. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.